Welcome to Galena United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Katiana. It's good to have you today. The community's health and welfare is of great importance to us. So currently our worship, study, group reflections, prayers, and meetings still take place using Zoom. We'll post gatherings on your email on our website and Facebook. And uh, please drop us a note or give me a call. Katiana, 630-935-3312, if you would like uh, any information or, or to be placed on our email list. A personal Zoom call is always possible. Um, I'm going to let you hear. I'm going to let you hear from the United Methodist Women, and they meet on Zoom for now the third Wednesday of each month at 1 p.m. Would love to have you join us. Let uh, Sherry give you some information. Hello, this is Galena United Methodist Women, and we would like to invite you to our, our group meetings. I'm going to read the purpose for United Methodist Women. The organized unit of United Methodist Women shall be a community of women <coughs> whose purpose is to know God and to experience freedom as whole persons through Jesus Christ, to develop a creative, supportive fellowship, and to expand concepts of mission through participation in the global ministries of the church. Join us. Join us. Let us seek simply this moment to slow down for a time. Let us worship leaning on prayer, reflection, and sharing with one another. The psalm that comes at the end of our series speaks of an active God whose light shines for all time and in all places. God is not silent, but calls the people to remember that they too can act on God's behalf, holding all suffering peoples in hands of prayer and care and transforming the world that will shine bright into the future. May it be so. This last week, we will sing all the verses of our theme song. The psalm that comes at the end of our series speaks of an active God whose light shines for all time and in all places. God is not silent, but calls the people to remember that they too can act on God's behalf, holding all suffering peoples in hands of prayer and care and transforming the world that will shine bright into the future. May it be so. This last week, we will sing all the verses of our theme song.
call on one who made the earth, who blessed the stars, the moon and sun. God is holding your life. God is holding your life. God is holding your life. We believe. God is holding. Praise you for, for your steadfast, steadfast presence, presence, holding our holding lives together, our lives in, together love. in love. Amen. Amen. Please join. whose glory fills the skies, Christ the true, the only light, Son of righteousness arise, triumph o'er the shades of night, day spring from on high be near, day star in my heart appear. 
and cheerless is the morn on the calm the need by thee joyous is the day's return till thy mercy's beams i see till the inward light impart glad my eyes and warm my heart visit then this soul of mine pierce the gloom of sin and grief fill me radiancy divine scatter all my unbelief more and more thyself display shining to the perfect Friends, Psalm 50 says that God is on the way to visit. Yeah, God is coming. <laughs> should we be uh, should we be scared? Can, can we be excited? Well, according to the psalmist, it is time to be very excited. This is a wonderful thing because God is coming with justice. From where the sun rises to where it goes down at night. God's voice is going out to the sky and to the earth that God is coming with justice, fairness for everyone. This Psalm might ask us to think about our lives and what is it like when justice is present, when we are embodying God's goodness, God's fairness for everyone. The song is called, The One is Shining Forth. And the name for God here is the one, which I learned from Van Morrison. <laughs>
friends. Our gospel reading is Mark 9, verses 2 through 9. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before him, before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had arisen from the dead. May God empower the word in our hearing. Our Let us pray. We hear of your divine voice transforming God and hope for new and better understandings of the ministries to which you call us. As we inherit the mantle of ministry from those who have preceded us, may we experience a broader understanding of what it means to be disciples of the Christ. Amen. Most of us have memories from our past that we'd like to preserve. So we take lots of photos, and I mean lots of photos, especially in these days of easy, good phone cameras and tablets. But your pictures, my pictures, when I visit them, they don't quite feel like those living memories of the past, no matter how good they look. They're true and they're not. But I look at them knowing that they capture only a single moment through one lens and one person's view of reality. They can't capture that moment of life in its entirety, nor can we stay in the moment they capture however much we want to. Peter, James, and John, who were present in last week's gospel at the healing in the beginning of new ministry are with Jesus for this extraordinary encounter. Just before our readings, Jesus was teaching the disciples a new truth about the cost of discipleship. He was predicting his own suffering, death and resurrection. Then he turned to the crowd and he tells his followers to take the same path he would soon take. Jesus then promised that there would be some who would not taste death until they see the kingdom of God come with power. Now, six days later, Mark tells us the transfiguration has taken place. Elijah and Moses, both having their own mountaintop uh, epiphanies, appear. Now, the Greek verb used here for appeared describes a manifestation of the divine. And later in the New Testament, it appears only when describing Christ's post-resurrection appearances. Peter, on that mountain, is as an enthusiastic as any camera buff, wanting to capture that perfect moment forever. Let's stay up here where it's wonderful and safe and, and we'll never have to change. Now, perhaps it was for Peter a moment to step back from the reality of where they may be headed. Peter couldn't take Jesus' predictions about his coming suffering and death. The voice, however, the voice from the cloud on the Mount of Transfiguration, like the voice from the cloud at Jesus' baptism back in chapter one, declares Jesus both the Son and the beloved. But here, those accompanying Jesus are told to listen to him. Now, perhaps it's an 
admonition that everything that Jesus has been saying must be believed and taken seriously. Jesus' transfiguration is a clear turning point in the gospel story. We're ready to move on. There's more ministry to be engaged. But life is now changing decisively for Jesus and for them, even as they're caught up in this moment of transformation. Now, from this mountain and this mountaintop experience, Jesus will set his face for Jerusalem and inevitably for his death. Yet, Peter is correct in another way. This is an extraordinary moment. It's a time set aside, an experience to be remembered. On this mountain, Jesus and his friends are, are caught up in an immeasurable moment in life. Here, there's an intersection. If only for a blink of an eye, there's an intersection with God and the world. It's a thin time, as our Celtic ancestors would describe it, when the boundaries between the visible world and the invisible become soft and permeable, when the veil lifts just a bit. They also recognize that such experiences are to be treasured for the gifts they are, but also for the gifts to propel one forward. This is certainly not the time, finally, for setting up tents. Now, what are those moments in your life, those turning points, but also those moments we might have gotten, you might have gotten stuck? Family photos document a portion of our lives. The intention of a photo is not to keep one one trapped in time, but it's a gift of memory that frees us to move forward with a little help along the way. It's a wonderful way to see God, that little help along the way. Perhaps another bit of good news. Thanks be to God. God is holding your life. God is holding your life. God is holding your life, we believe. God is holding your life. God is holding your life. God is holding your life, we believe. Let us pray. Now for our Selah moment. Let us have one more Selah moment together and end this series. However, we hope that you will continue to find and create these intentional pauses for yourself in your days. Remembering to acknowledge the loving God who is holding your life. We will hear the sound and then some silence. Feel free to close your eyes if you like. Imagine yourself held in safety and love and care. When you hear the sound again, open your eyes. Please join me as we prepare for prayer.
Pray for the leaders of this world and this church community. Together, God of justice, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who live in conflict around the world. Prince of peace, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who are experiencing loss of any kind in this pandemic. Comforting healer, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who are homeless, hungry, and alone. Emmanuel, God with us, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who live in comfort, for Christ-like hospitality and generosity. Transforming spirit, hear our prayer. Please join me in the prayer of Jesus or the Lord's Prayer in whatever words or form that touches your heart that you feel most familiar with. Or let the words wash over you. Let us pray together. Our Father, Mother God, you who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now for the passing of the peace. The peace of the Christ be with you and also, also with, with you. you. Will you make a gesture of extending your cupped hands toward others who may be with you or near you as a sign of offering the peace that Christ gives us? If you are alone, place your cupped hands over your heart as a sign that you send your heartfelt peace out to the world. And now for... Our offerings are part of the way we can bind up the broken and affirm the worth of all. Through our giving, we remember that God is with us and calling us to be with and for others, being Christ's hands and feet in the world. We encourage you to donate by mail or electronic giving through your bank. A donation button is on our Facebook page, or you can donate through our website at www.galenaumc.org. Your donation enables us to reach out to our community and beyond as the body and Christ prayerfully in action. Also, join us starting through our Change for the Better. This quarterly Change for the Better goes to Galena ARC, the Art and Rec Center. 
They have been serving our community for over 45 years. It provides community involvement through art classes, sports, recreation, fitness, childcare, and early education. Remember too, we have our Galena Community Blood Drive that takes place on March 4th from 1 to 5.30 p.m. at Crossroads Community Church and their Fellowship Hall. Crossroads is located across from Galena Post Office Annex at Galena Square. And uh, if you do not have the Red Cross, Cross donor app to sign up, they ask that you call Nicole Miller at 563-275-0000. Uh, as walk-ins are not allowed because of COVID. Uh, remember that uh, your donation is the gift of life and um, you will, as always, give a pint, get a pint of Culver's Custard. As our prayer today, I invite you to think of ways in which you can invest yourself in God's reign of justice, peace, and love. What is something you can do to help bring that about? Let us pray. Generous God, you give us opportunities, time, patience, and care. May we use the gifts from you to encourage others, share with others, and work with others as we invest in your reign of justice, peace, and love. Amen. Our Now go in the knowledge that God is holding your life, even as we hold each other. You are not alone. You are loved. Amen.